Well, we calculated the performance for our system under one operating condition. And on that basis, we went over here and we decided that from, from the TACO pump selector, that this uh, model 1548 pump made sense. So we got the uh, performance curves for that 1548 and I went and digitized them. So if we load that in, we can then plot that data out. And there are the curves that we got before. So we've got a reasonable representation of what the actual pump performance is in digital form. So now we've got to go and find out what is the system performance, the piping performance, over this whole range of flow rates based on what our input was uh, from our uh, piping system. So let's repeat the calculations that we did before, but let's do it over all of the values of Q in the pump curve range. So I'm going to take an array of different velocities from zero up to whatever the velocity is that corresponds to 3200 US GPM. I'm taking the collection of metric flow rates that the pump can deliver, and I'm dividing by pi d squared over four for my pipe. So that'll give me a bunch of pipe flow velocities. I'm calculating my system head based on that paper equation that we developed before. And then I'm going and calculating a whole array of Reynolds numbers corresponding to the array of different velocity values, getting a whole collection of friction factors dependent on that range of Reynolds numbers and my relative roughness, and then calculating a whole range of system head requirements based on my elevation change, the friction factor times L over D plus sigma K times v squared over 2g. So exactly the same kind of calculation as I did before. And I'll run through that and see what I get. So having run the calculation, I've got essentially the same values from the paper equation that I had before and the range of values calculations that we just did now. So this is the range of values down here. And we'll see that it's a little bit higher at low flow rates and a little bit lower at high flow rates. That's because the friction factor is going from uh, higher than we had before to lower than we had before at high flow rate values. So these are coming in fairly consistently and we'll see what they look like when we plot them. They are basically the same result. So we didn't really need to keep track of how that flow rate uh, variation was changing the friction factor because it wasn't changing the friction factor very much. So now I'm going to go down here and for all the range of uh, uh, different pump impeller sizes, I'm going to plot the pump curves like I did before. Then I'm going to plot my system head, the one that I calculated here with all the variable friction factors. And I'm going to plot the system head that I got by hand before for the six inch pipe, just so we can compare those two. And I'll make some reasonable limits on the plot and, uh, and put some labels on. So let's run that. And here we can see the curve. Here's our six different curves for the different impellers. And here's our system response. And in fact, the one that we calculated with the variable friction factors and the one that we calculated before by hand are so close to each other that we really can't see the difference in this diagram. But what we do see is that where we had our design flow rate of 0.1 cubic meter per second and our resulting head loss in the pipe of 80.27 meters, that's where we are. And that corresponds to just above this green line the green line is for the 16 inch impeller. And so we're getting the same kind of behavior. We're getting the same match for our operating point relative to the 16 inch impeller diameter as we had before. So basically what we've succeeded in doing here is replicating exactly what we could have done with pencil and paper on the manufacturer's pump curve fairly easily. But we've managed to get all of these numbers digitized so we can plot them out together. Now where it's going to get more interesting is if we want to try out some different ideas. So for example, let's suppose I decided that having a head loss due to friction and minor losses that was almost as large as the useful work I was doing, that is they were both about 40 meters, I decided that friction loss was a little too high, it was wasting a little too much energy, I might go up a pipe size. So I could go up here to the top 
and where I had a six inch pipe here before, I could make this an eight inch nominal diameter pipe. So I'll repeat the calculation, I'll fill that in, get the right diameters now. I've got my pump curves, and they should be all still the same. I can repeat the calculations over a range of values, and now I should see some changes in what I get out of my plot. So, here's the line that I had before. That was my original system with my 6-inch pipe. When I switched up to an 8-inch pipe, I have much lower losses, and the result is that the flow for this 8-inch uh, pipe for the same loss, say, or the same uh, head rise across a pump of about 80, is more like about uh, point, uh, point 0.185 rather than point 0.1. So I'm seeing much lower head requirements to get the same flow or much higher flow for the same head delivered by the pump. So suppose we'd taken this 16 inch impeller and we bought that because it got pretty close to our design requirement. And I'd then gone up to an eight inch pipe when I did the actual build. Well, in that case, I'd operate here where the 16 inch impeller line intersects our new system curve and I'd wind up delivering about 0.14 cubic meters per second rather than the 0.1 which was my design. So if I had caught this before I'd actually gone to the uh, point of ordering the pump and, and selecting this 16 inch impeller I could decide that I can get away now with this 14.17 inch impeller, the smaller impeller in the same pump and I'd still get more than my required design uh, flow rate of 0.1 cubic meters per second. So that could save me some money and it would probably be a little bit more energy efficient. On the other hand if I already bought the pump and I'd installed the 8 inch pipe and I discovered that I was getting way more flow than I wanted out of my system, I was uh, things were running too quickly, I could go back up and I could adjust this globe valve. I've got a globe valve here which I can use to dramatically increase the losses in the system. What I can do is I can put some friction in here, some minor losses, and that will soak up some of the energy that's being added by the pump. So suppose this minor loss coefficient went from 15 up to say 125. Well, let's see what happens if we do that. I can go down here now and I can do my calculations over again. And I'm back up to having quite a large head loss coming out of my system. When I do the plot, now I can see I'm getting a larger head loss here than I was before, before this curve was out here somewhere. But by closing down the valve, I have reduced the amount of flow going through the system. And if I'd bought the 16 inch, I'd be getting only about a 0.08 cubic meter per second uh, flow rate now. So I can adjust that valve, and what that does is it takes my system curve and makes it steeper and steeper and steeper, so that using that globe valve, I can adjust for whatever flow rate I want out of the pump that's lower than what it would deliver if the valve was wide open. So that's the practical outcome, and I can now start to simulate what would happen in my design if I changed my operating parameters.